Hello there. Uh, it's a very special day today, this lecture being a final lecture. And therefore, I'd like to say right from the beginning, two purposes today. First of all, to encourage you to work hard and do well. And secondly, to review what we've been doing through all these weeks. I hope you've enjoyed what we've been doing. I hope you've learned from it. I hope it has gained you practice, and I hope it will lead to further learning. But I'm sure all of you, you're all very practical. I'm, I'm practical too. I'm sure all of you are concerned about how you will be tested. A test is coming, and we have to rely upon this. But I have some good news for you. In my exams, there are no surprises. There are things we have done, and there are particular, uh, what you say, exercises we do. My homework exercises are directed so that when you take the final exam, you know the format. There's no new way. How do I do this? No, it's merely the material may be different. So I thought it a good idea, once again, to take you through the five different tasks you will have to accomplish on the final exam. And we begin with the first one, which is understanding a listening passage. Now, this passage, the one I'm giving you today as practice, is not based on any of the lectures we did. In, face, in fact, it's based on one we did earlier. And those of you who took 210 will recognize it. And I thought it a very good idea to, once again, that you see the manner, what is involved. So a listening passage, here is the listening passage, and then we'll go through the items together. The first part, understanding a listening passage. You will be given uh, some, it says, a practice listening passage is included for you at the end of class lecture number nine. When it comes to the exam, you will have a listening passage. As here, listen carefully, take notes. You will be given paper to try and take notes. Get down the important information as you're listening. So you can do that right now as a practice. And here's our little story that you need to use in, pr in uh, answering the questions. It's called A Trip to the Beach. Last week, Sala and his two brothers decided to go for a trip to the beach. The day was bright and sunny when they set off for Golden Bay. It was a two-hour drive by car, and when they arrived, they ran to the water, left their street clothes, and jumped into the water in their swimming trunks. The hours passed quickly as they swam, sat on rocks along the shore, and told stories about other trips they had taken. By afternoon, the weather changed. Clouds appeared and covered the sun, and a cool wind started to blow. So Salah and his brothers decided to go back to where they had started and put their warmer clothing on. What a surprise they had when they got there. Their car stood where they had left it, but where were their clothes? They shook their heads in wonder. Then the cry of a bird made them look up. It was a large white seagull, but it was carrying a red shirt in its beak. That was the shirt of Salah's little brother. When they looked more, they saw more of their clothing, some in trees, others on rocks in the distance, but it was all torn and dirty. Apparently, the gulls had fun too that day snatching away clothing and tearing it up. So Salah and his brothers had to drive back home in their swimming trunks. Now, you will, have, you will need to understand what happened. Maybe taking notes will have helped you to understand. And then you have these questions to answer. And always, in accordance with the procedure of the exam, you have five choices to make. Now, the first question, how did the boys spend their day? Shopping, studying, swimming, hiking, reading. The best choice of these five is C, swimming. We heard they went to the beach, they jumped in the water. This was something we're doing. Of the others, none is really appropriate. Number two, what was the weather like in the morning? notice in the morning. It was a beautiful day, we heard. So the best choice of A, stormy, B, cold, C, foggy, D, sunny, E, uncertain, would definitely be D, sunny. That's why they decided to go to the beach. Number three, here maybe taking notes would have helped you. 
How long did they need to reach their dis destination? Well, when I was reading this to you, you should have probably taken down that it, they, they, a two-hour drive. And so the best choice here is two-hour. Now, you're wondering why there are only uh, four choices, because the other one is on the next page all day. So two hours, one hour, half the day, all night. The best choice is A, two hours. Number four, what did Salah and his brothers do there? Now, do there, we heard going to the beach. There refers to the beach. Now, again, we look at the choices. Ate breakfast, caught fish, played water polo, watched the clouds, or told stories. Now, we heard they went into the water, they swam, and they sat on the rocks and told stories. So of the five choices, A through E, the only good choice there is E, told stories. Number five, what made them change their minds? Now, their minds were to go swimming for the day, but they changed their mind, and so we have to choose which one of these is correct. One boy got sick. B, the weather changed. C, the police told them to leave. D, they were afraid of the dark. E, they needed more food. B is the correct choice. What you heard, you remember in the passage when we were doing this, we heard that suddenly uh, the weather changed and we heard that clouds appeared and covered the sun and a cool wind started to blow. Remember, it started as a sunny day, so the best choice here is B, the weather changed. Number six, what surprised them when they returned? What surprised, what did they think was strange? A, the car wouldn't start. B, the car was gone. C, the clothes were gone. D, the sand was muddy. E, they all felt ill. Well, it was a problem of the clothes, wasn't it? So C is our choice here. C, the clothes were gone. Then we come to seven. Again, we have this strange anomaly where part of it is on the next page. So let me uh, just do that here. Let me adjust that. I think I'm going to have to fold this page here. All right, so here we are. So now we're on number seven and the five choices for seven. Seven, where did they see the red shirt? Well, you heard they looked up and they saw it in the, in the beak of a bird. So the best choice here is A, hanging from a tree, B, lying under the car, C, floating in the sea, D, under the rocks, E, in a bird's beak. Well, the last, E in a bird's beak. Huh? They looked up, they saw the bird, a gull, and so that would be your choice. Number eight, why did they leave their clothes behind? Why didn't they take the clothes? They were too far away. B, they had no value. C, they couldn't see them. D, they were in bad condition. E, they couldn't find them. The best choice is D. We heard that the gulls had a good time tearing up the shirts, and they were all dirty and torn. Now we come to the last two items. Number nine, what is a seagull? Now this is a good example of using context. We heard they looked up in the sky, they saw it in the bill of this, so I'm sure if we have to choose a type of fish, a large turtle, a seabird, a mammal, a type of plant, of course you would choose a seabird. Remember, we don't always have to explicitly tell you the meaning you should be able to choose it from the context. If someone said, I went to, went to dinner and I had a wonderful dish of veal, well, I'm sure you would guess that veal is something we eat. It's a type of food, huh? Same thing here. And finally, number 10 of our passage. How did Salah and his brothers return home? They walked, uh, they drove, they took a boat, they got a ride from another person. Well, I see there one of, our, one of our items is missing again. It must be on the page. But let's just choose among the four. They walked, they drove, they took a boat, they got a ride from another traveler. Well, we know B, they drove. So that will be the first task you have to do, listening to a passage and choosing answers. The next task will be what are called reductions. Reductions something that you may remember 
uh, we have practiced very often in every unit. We have had our reductions. Huh? Let's look at some of these just so you remember what reductions are about. Huh? Nice little review here. Reductions. See the word there? Reductions. So you will hear a sentence such as this. Number one, how are you doing? How are you doing? And I'd ask you, what does how are you? How are you? And when you look at how are they, how is it, how can they, how can, how are you, who are you, your choice would be D. Okay, how are you, how are you, is how are you. Uh, this is reduction, very important for you as you advance in English, because more and more you will hear continuous speech where people do not slow down to pronounce every word separately. Number two, they want to go home. They want to go home. Wanna, a went to. When to, want to, one to, one do. Well, wanna here is see. They wanna means they want to go home. Number three. Don't you know why he came? Don't you know why he came? Don't cha. Well, number three, don't you? Don't we? Doing? Does he? Don't you? Do we? Don't you is d. Don't you? Number four. I have to go to the store. I have to go to the store. Have to. Have to. A, B, C, D, E. We're going to choose E. H, A, V, E, to. Have to. But of course, in continuous speech, becomes have to. Number five. Could you bring me a new cover for the table? Could you? Could you bring me? Okay. Could you? Can you? Could you? Did you? Do you? Should you? You would choose B. Could you? Now, a point of encouragement for you. This is something that's in your book, so you can, every unit we have reductions, so please review them if you haven't. Then our next task is always close items. Close is a technique used in, uh, in learning, and in close we always have, we're always choosing things that are missing. So we begin here with number, number six as an example. You hear a sentence. This is the sentence that you hear. So, Ali, is this your first trip to Cairo? So, Ali, is this your first trip to Cairo? You hear your first. Now, you have to know a little grammar here. It's not A, you first. It has to be your first. Huh? And so it's going to be B, your first trip. Seven. And what's your impression so far? And what's your impression so far? The last two words are missing. A, B, C, D, E. We're going to choose D. So far. So far. Huh? Number eight. But the weather isn't so good. But the weather isn't so good. Well, we have a contraction here. huh? Isn't so. Of course, E is equivalent to that. Now we come to nine and ten. Yes, the, the food was pretty good. Yes, the food was pretty good. Well, the last two words, we choose C. Huh? Not brought out, not buttered good, not uh, pertin good, not partly good, but C, pretty. Remember, pretty means rather, not fully. We call this a qualitative, qualitative huh? like somewhat, rather. We have a number of these in English. Quite, he's quite good. Huh? Quite good, not bad, not very good, quite good. Huh? And here, pretty good. Number 10. Anyway, uh, what, was it that's, what was it that surprised you? Anyway, what was it that surprised you? Huh? Three words missing. A, has he that, had he that, is it that, was it that, and you should have chosen E. What is it that surprised you? Huh? Okay. So that's reductions and close. Now we come to the last area in the homework, which you which you are doing homework about, and that is vocabulary. Now, as I said, this is not uh, from your exercises here, and it may bring back some memories for you. Here we have. Let me change this so you can see it properly. Yes, we. You need to see the other selections there. They're on the next page. 
All right, so this is what we do here. All right, I hope you see the four choices there. The four choices, fiber, mineral, calorie, impression, and skies. And then I give you a, what we call a paraphrase, a definition, number 11, a measure of energy in food. A measure of energy in food, the only one that would fit here would be C, calorie. Same for number 12, directions for making a particular dish of food. Directions for making a particular dish of food. And of course, your choice would be A, recipe. 13, place to have dirty clothes washed. Place to have dirty clothes washed. And you're going to choose diner, station, clinic, block, or laundry. Of course, E, laundry. Come to the last examples, 14. Spending time out in nature. Spending time. And of course, I'm not going, we just had camping, huh? B there, camping. And finally, 15, measure of how hot. Measure of temperature. Aaron, community, jaywalking, degree, intermediate. Of course, degree, measure of temperature. Now, I've taken the time going through these, not because you should remember these facts, but that you understand the technique because this is exactly how your final exam will be laid out. There will be one further uh, area, and that is contexts. Let's take an example of that now, just to review. Here is an example from one of our units of some context items. In the case of a context, you hear a conversation. For example, let's look at number two, A. Can I come see you tomorrow? B. Sure. What's the problem? A. I'm totally confused about this week's chemistry experiment. B. Didn't you come to the lab yesterday? A. Yeah, but I had to leave early and I missed part of your demonstration. Who is the person talking to? A chemist? A secretary? A roommate? Or a TA? Now, we chose a TA, a teaching assistant, because he talked about the lab demonstration that he made and why were you absent from it, huh? this week's experiment. So that wouldn't be a chemist. A chemist doesn't do an experiment every week, but a teacher of chemistry does, and a teaching assistant is helping. So we chose TA in that case. Another example of a context would be this one. Um, excuse me, what are the requirements for this course? B. Uh, well, you'll have a grammar quiz every Monday, and then there'll be a final exam at the end of the course. During the course, you're required to attend language lab two hours every week. And, of course, your attendance class participation are very important. What type of course is he asking about? Now, chemistry, history, German, or business. Now, we chose German. Why? We heard grammar. We heard language lab. Huh? Those would not be true of chemistry or history or business. And so again, we use the context to choose German. And finally, let's look at number four. Let's listen to this one. Conversation four. Uh, you asked to see me, Professor Jansen? Me? Uh, yes. Uh, would you like to explain to me what happened on this research paper? Uh, what do you mean, sir? Uh, it's almost exactly the same as a paper I received from another student two years ago. What has the student probably done? Failed an exam? Was late to class? Plagiarized a term paper? Forgot to do a homework assignment? Well, the correct choice is plagiarized because the professor says this is the same as a research paper that I received two years ago. And of course, we learned that plagiarize means using someone else's material and putting your name on it. Okay? So my purpose in going through these things today was to give you, in that sense, the outline, the format of the final exam. Now, your homework did that already in a way, but I wanted to bring this home to you. Now, I, of course, will see you for live classes uh, some evenings in the future, 
But uh, I want to make this clear to all of you, because I might not see all of you live. So I want to make this very clear in this last lecture. Many of you ask, what do you need to know? You need to know what we have done. You must be able to recognize the various vocabulary, the various situations that we have practiced. This is very much a practice course. Now, I'd like to encourage you, though, for your own benefit and for your own advancement in English, to listen widely once you finish this course, or even while you're doing it, but maybe this summer, you listen to many other things. But here, we have a specific task. We have a certain what we call material. Our material is based on the six units of this book. Of course, the, our language is much wider than this. It encompasses so much more. But this is a basis. If you have this basis, it will be easy to move to other things. And I encourage you to do that. I'm sure other, other of your instructors tell you the same thing. It's not enough to just do what is required in the course. When you learn a language, you must, on your own, do a lot of work. Listening, speaking, understanding what you read. But I'm concerned, of course, in this uh, particular subject with your listening. So do listen widely, listen carefully. Now, let me tell you, it has been a pleasure uh, doing this class with you over these weeks. I, of course, welcome any of your comments and questions. This will not be the last time I see you, because we will have some live contact classes. But, of course, this is my last lecture to you. So what do I end with? First of all, words of encouragement. You can do this if you put your mind to it. It's not, there's nothing secret. There's nothing strange. Don't get worried. No. Prepare well. Come to the exam with a, you know, a clear mind in good condition, and I'm sure you will do well. <clears throat> we all would like to see you do very well. Let me give you this encouragement. Last time, people did very well. I expect you to do the same. Thank you very much. <laughs>